Ever since the health crisis burst, plunging the world's economy with it, financial gurus have been warning of another Great Depression. While the United States struggles to avert yet another economic collapse, those warning sounds have become louder than ever. They say the next Great Depression will be far greater than the one of 1929 to 1933. This time, the impacts will likely persist for much longer than before, and they will be much more acute, considering our economy is now plagued by a massive national debt that only grows bigger and bigger with each passing day. At this point, most experts already know the current monetary policy is driving off the country to a financial cliff as it inflates asset bubbles to dangerously high levels, threatening to bring about unexpected disasters that will only aggravate our economic hardships even further. There are so many determinants weighing upon our financial markets that it just takes one single failure to trigger a major meltdown. And when that happens, we will find ourselves in the early stages of the first Great Depression of our lifetime. Our economy is on very shaky ground already, but that doesn't seem to bother our leaders who intend to keep on spending trillions of dollars regardless of the consequences. However, by doing so, they're destroying the very foundations that have been keeping the country afloat. In other words, the only thing preventing America from descending into utter chaos is the dollar's leading position as the world's reserve currency. The vast majority of international business transactions are conducted in US dollars, so pretty much all countries and international corporations around the planet have to buy dollars in order to trade their goods. But quantitative easing policies, which basically create money out of thin air, have been depreciating the value of our currency, setting off inflation, and leading to worrying imbalances both in the markets and the economy. U.S. consumers are seeing the effects of the distortions caused by those liquidity injections right where it hurts them the most, in their wallets. Housing costs, consumer goods, and grocery prices have all been skyrocketing in recent days. Americans' purchasing power, on the other hand, has been dwindling. As opposed to what some may think, prices aren't rising just because businesses are charging more for their products. In fact, companies are charging more because the materials they need to buy are far more expensive. That is to say, they are essentially reacting to inflation, which in turn perpetuates the cycle. So, the more money the Federal Reserve creates, the more it dilutes the value of every existing dollar. The pace of money creation has significantly surpassed the pace of economic growth, which means that every dollar artificially created collapsed the value of a dollar that's already in circulation. This has been happening for decades, but it wasn't so noticeable, because during previous recessions, we managed to gradually boost production and balance things out, which is not the case nowadays. Over the past 17 months, we have created more money than ever before in history. And in face of rampant inflation and the formation of overblown market bubbles, international partners, traders, and investors are questioning if it's still worth it to hold on to their dollars and their treasury bonds. If they lose confidence in our nation and decide to massively dump their dollars, we will not only see the entire house of cards crashing down, but also be doomed to decades of steep financial pain. Once we hit that stage, our leaders cannot say that they did not see it coming because every day a new series of signs, alerts, and warnings continue to emerge, highlighting the dangers of our reckless monetary decisions. When policymakers insist nothing serious is going on, alleging that our economy can support high debt levels and affirming inflation will be a, quote, transitory, unquote, thing, 
What they are actually saying is that they will not make any preventative changes and they will continue to rely on the misconception that the world will support holding on to a lot more U.S. debt, which would supposedly allow our government to borrow and spend even more. Needless to say, in a time where most of the world's economies are completely exhausted from the recessions they've been facing on their own, this is definitely not a good strategy. Right now, the current administration is working on a $6 trillion spending bill proposal that will likely be approved by Congress by the end of the year. But when Congress authorized the last $2 trillion relief bill, several economists rushed to alert us that we were reaching unsustainable levels of debt. And yet, it doesn't seem like our leaders are taking this problem seriously. The big question is, for how much longer will they be able to get away with a spending binge before it turns into a major national crisis that'll not only bring the U.S. economy down, but send the entire world into a global financial nightmare? One thing is certain, once the U.S. goes down, no one will come to bail us out. Partner countries are also seeing their economic conditions sharply deteriorate, and after a financial collapse hits, they will be solely focused on healing their own wounds. Just as during the Great Depression of the 20th century and the last housing bubble burst when the entire world was affected by the financial troubles generated here in the United States, our economic partners will try to bail themselves out. Thanks to us, and our leader's choice to overlook the dimension of our own problems. That's why we can't simply expect external help to rescue our nation from the mess we created ourselves, and with the certainty that another Great Depression is fast approaching, we need to prepare for the worst. Economic depressions affect every single person in society, because when the value of money plunges, and the price of goods soar, we lose our ability to afford products, and therefore businesses lose revenue, they're forced to lay off workers, which feeds the crisis even more. Inflation levels can reach three to four figures, while wages remain stagnant in the best case scenario, or in the worst case and most likely scenario, they're significantly reduced which means that those who are already having a hard time making ends meet at the present will be the hardest hit by the next Great Depression. Those who work in non-essential industries and luxury markets will be the first ones to lose their jobs, and as heavily in debt people will lose their ability to pay their debt, as a result they might lose everything, including their homes. For that reason, we have listed today a few simple measures you can take not to be caught by surprise by the upcoming financial catastrophe and risk losing your home or see your family go hungry. These are the very basics of disaster preparedness, and as things are quickly spiraling out of control, you should start getting ready as soon as you can. Firstly, get a secure job. If you have worked or are currently working in an industry that has been severely disrupted by the effects of the virus crisis, it's very likely it will also be affected by the coming depression. So you need to find something that will provide you more stability. If you can do something that will expand your own set of skills, it will be even better for you. The food industry, as well as construction, repair companies, those things are always needed regardless of the economic outlook. Knowing how to build, knowing how to fix things is not only a secure job with reliable pay, but also a survival skill that can make a difference in times of crisis. Providing services like repairing computers, appliances, or cars can be profitable even when the economy goes south. Jobs in the medical field also tend to be very stable, and they're, of course, extremely important at all times and circumstances. Secondly, get out of debt. If you're in debt, do whatever's in your power 
to pay for it as much as you can. Mortgage payments may not be as simple to get rid of. So the first step is to assess if you can afford the total payment of your current mortgage every month. If you can't, then you'll have to make a hard choice. Sell your home, move into a more affordable location to lower your monthly payment. In case this isn't a possibility, try to refinance it, see if it's possible to save some money here and there. Student loan, credit card debt are also major problems tormenting people's lives. If the size of your debt is higher than you could ever pay given your current conditions, you can try to liquidate one of your main assets like your home or maybe your automobile. But even more importantly, seek information about what you can do, how the law can protect you from losing your belongings. You need to find that out now. The tricky thing about debt is that it allows the government to track you down, no matter where you are. So if you can, stay away from it. Move if you can. When a financial crisis occurs, the last place you want to be is in the middle of a big, chaotic city. It gets increasingly unsafe and expensive to live in urban areas, which are often more populated and, as a consequence, more vulnerable to face food shortages, social conflicts, homelessness crises, and transportation issues. People who would otherwise obey the law get extremely desperate when they lose their means to afford food for themselves and their families, and they resort to stealing to get what they need. Smaller, rural areas are far safer and will allow you to be more independent. You can grow your own food, you can raise animals. And that way, you're not only detached from the system, you're also immune to the effects of inflation. The best alternative to survive an economic depression is to find ways to become self-sufficient. Which leads us to the next topic. If you can become self-sufficient. Food shortages and rising food costs are already a reality. We know that, but if you grow food by yourself, you won't spend nearly as much to feed your family. Don't worry about growing every single food your family might want to eat. Choose a small variety of food staples and learn how to transform them into different things. Several products can be incredibly versatile, such as potatoes, corn, and beans. The most important thing here is consistency. Make sure you know what you're growing, when it's time to harvest, and when to rotate your crops. Learn farming skills and do it now. And don't forget to stockpile. If you can afford to, build up a stockpile. This is the very basis of all prepping. A food and water stockpile is the best investment one can make in face of a hyperinflationary economy. Going into a depression, prices will be much more elevated than they are today. But you can avoid a great level of stress and pain just by slowly building up a stock with the products you and your family may need. It can be an overwhelming process assessing all the supplies you'll potentially need, so don't be afraid to look for help. Preparedness websites such as Urban Survival, Ask a Prepper, and Survivalist Prepper can provide you crucial information on this topic. So make sure you go that extra mile for yourself and for your loved ones. In that way, you may be secured while everyone else struggles to stay afloat after the world starts to finally face its doomsday.